I told you all, Johnny Depp is the classic sociopath, like the typical sociopath that they always talk about, right? The typical dropout, the typical, you know, this whole thing and pulls a shit show in front of everybody. And people give him passes because they think he's hot. Okay, so uh, sociopaths, it doesn't matter what the hell they look like. They come looking decent. They come looking ugly. And I've had a mixture of them all, okay? Because there's been guys that I'm like, he's a decent looking guy. Uh, but it doesn't change the fact that he's ruined goods, okay? That's the real ruined goods in life. And they like to flip it on women after they rape them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sociopath says the woman is now ruined goods because of me, right? Because of me. And when I went through his history, because I go through their childhood history because it matters every freaking which way, that the conduct um, was atrocious. And he was like flirting with female cops and stuff like that and doing stuff like that. And they find it charismatic. I find it highly annoying and it disgusts me. So there's a difference between some of these women. And the women that they were asking are abusers as well. So you're like, was this guy abusive? And then you see one of the women in here was violent and she wanted to go beat up Amber Heard. I'm like, I don't care if she was lying. Why the hell would I want to go beat her up? You know, that's a different thing. And I've been saying, I go, these women are atrocious. Do you go look at the females' backgrounds that are saying it, that are covering it up because it was a different story back in the day. Back in the day, they talked about how he's throwing crap and doing all these things. He's an abuser. Now, this is so interesting to study because at the time when they were questioning him, I, I don't understand why the attorneys didn't bring up all the history things. Uh, maybe because legally... I mean, I, I consider it relevant if you're pulling in ex-girlfriends, then you should pull in where he's like, I beat up some gay guy because he was hitting on me. And, um, I, you know, who cares about breaking stuff? I could pay for it. That's his mentality. And then he uses his daughter, which is disgusting because I hope she doesn't become a monster. But he uses his daughter as like this... Uh, uh, human shield, right? So after he got busted, he throws her out there and I would be so mad at my dad for doing this crap. It's like, don't get me involved in your bullshit. But that's what he did. But that's your typical socio because everybody's a pawn, even their own kids. And he talks about women in such a disgusting way, which he's basically saying it to his daughter. Um, so she's, this must be totally normal for her. You know, this is awful. And then she's going to be really crappy to other women. But we know his history a bit. So his mother, he has an issue with his mama. Okay, so his mom was actually his favorite one a long time ago. And I guess both his parents were totally abusive. Like, they, I mean, here's the thing. Here's the truth of this story. Back when he was a kid, his parents should have been arrested. And he should have been rescued out of that home. And he was a victim at that time. At that time. Not now. He was a victim at that time. So then he goes out, his mother encouraged him to be violent. You don't just become violent on a single gender. You're just generally violent. And the way he's going at people isn't the way that I go at people. So when people, okay, so somebody like him, I have to talk to him in the way she just taught, he just talked to her. And there's actually some reasoning to this. And I, and I was trying to figure this out because um, when people take advantage of me, they're him, basically. And he doesn't respond to nice. He doesn't respond to reason. He doesn't respond to a very, you know, kind, caring person. He doesn't. He'll listen to you if you ream the shit out of him and talk to him the way he's talking to you. It sucks. But this is the problem with child abuse. And I was trying to figure this out because I was like, I don't like yelling at people. I don't like having these interactions with these men who are totally abusive and they don't respect me just generally. So when that person comes out, when I'm kind of uh, doing the rapport, I guess they call it report, like re responding to them in the way they respond to me and disrespecting me, all of a sudden they're, they, they do something. All of a sudden, they listen and they do something and correct an issue or whatever the case may be, right? 
and I'm not this way with everybody. It's really weird. So it's like, um, when I start getting taken advantage of that person comes out and it has to come out because they're taking advantage of me. He does it. I was trying to explain the difference of this. So he does it, um, when he's just throwing his power and control around, right? So, well, I, I'm going to show you this. So she's talking about it and mimicking him. And basically he's being his mother. It's, it's a interesting thing. So he's always been this way. He has a long, long history of this. The public just wants to shame women and everything else. Amber did not lie about those things. And it was him talking about this other stuff in the story. But they just wanted to have a heyday trashing on women. It's just that. They just hate women. So what was her experience? So she worked with them. And in fact, during the trial, he's on. He's getting busted for abusing other men on set. And it's like, oh, we're just going to ignore that. He's a victim. He's not a victim. He was a victim as a kid. Um, he also victimized Marilyn in multiple ways, but Marilyn's such a sociopath that it's fine with them, and he probably abuses him back. And it and it's the most bizarre thing to sit here and watch. And it starts letting you understand something a little bit more about intuality of them raping each other, right? And then they go out and rape us. And then, then they throw in the whole thing like, I'm a victim. You know, let's ignore that I'm a rapist now and a total socio. And um, you need to pity me because of this. And you try to use his childhood to pity him. And no, it's never a thing to pity them. It's like, holy crap, he has a good chance of being a socio. And he's like, sitting here, you know, making up shit. And he's laughing. He's laughing in court. And I go, that's your just typical socio. I mean, anybody that has dealt with these guys, uh, serial killers or any of them, uh, that that's the easiest thing to watch and it's disgusting to watch. And 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 he's smirking. It's, it's the Joker face. That's why I said, I guess, insincere, nothing. He's not, you know, it's like, I have the best legal team out here. We're going to totally, you know, get away with everything. So, um... They said they were. She was reminded of her bad experience and blow while watching coverage of Amber in the Depp trial, right? And um, and to be with Johnny, you almost, like okay, I wouldn't say that I would be with him, but if I was with him, um, he would flip around the script of me defending myself against him because I would respond back probably in the way that she did in a lot of ways. Um, and so they just flip it around. So it's like, no matter what you do, they'll take it and then flip it. And then them calling her a social, I guess she's not, it's actually him. Um, and he has the long history of it. She does not have that history in the media of any part of that, but she's more capable of dealing, which she shouldn't be, but she's more capable of dealing and being with somebody like that. Um, Versus, say, somebody else. They Like, you know, this woman here obviously had a problem with them. And, you know, she already knows that if she got into a relationship with them, how that's going to turn out, right? So she knows. She knows. And, um, and I've been watching this with other men, too. It's just like from afar, it seems fine up until, uh, you know, it gets thrown back on you. And you're like, oh, wow, I just didn't even think of that. But, yeah, yeah. Criminal Minds alum uh, Lola Gladini shared a new story about Johnny Depp from the set of 2001 film Blow. Uh, oh, yeah. So back in this time period and prior, even in the early 90s portion, he was just out and proud socio. He's like, oh, yeah, I don't give a shit. You know, I go out and I throw shit and I have fits. And, you know, we all have these bad days. You know, he's trying to relate himself to everybody. Because a lot of men are piles of shit and they're abusers. So he's he's talking to that crowd, a male supremacist and, and, and sociopaths, because that's what he is. I mean, that's just what he is. I mean, can you do anything about it? No. His mother is atrocious. You go beat them up, kid. I'm just like, no wonder he's a dropout and he's on drugs and everything else is wrong with him. Okay, so in a clip, it resurfaced on Twitter and she recalled fucked up situation that she had never shared publicly before involving Depp shouting at her in front of the entire cast and crew while shooting. The actress says the experience brought back to her mind while watching new footage of Depp and Amber Heard trial. Yeah. Some women just excuse this behavior as being just a man. 
It's like, nope, that's a socio. And I had this experience on sets. That's why I was saying, I go, and was it from Depp? I didn't work with Depp ever. Um, but I had a female do this to me. And I could, I could probably excuse that if I did something so horrible that, uh, I don't know, like I could get arrested or something, uh, where somebody would start just yelling at me. Uh, it was over nothing and they went on a whole thing. I mean, a big, huge scene. And it was from guys that went to J Depp's bar. They were guys that hung out at the Viper room. Then they all hung out at the Viper room afterwards. And, but Depp wasn't there. I never met Depp. I didn't have any experience with Depp. I don't ever remember him being even mentioned from anybody I was around. It was kind of interesting. Um, except for the fact that those guys went and played at the bar. Uh, the thing was revolved around them. And then after this, the shoots, uh, Jennifer Aniston and all them went over to the, um, the Viper room. They were all hanging out there even before, before taping, I guess. And so they have this relationship with those people. So naturally, they're going to sit there and defend this kind of shit to the end. Because they're all abusers. That's the truth of it. They're actual abusers. And some of the women in this are actually far worse than even Johnny Depp. And I don't think people are viewing it that way. They're like, we should ask the women how they were. And it's like, I'm telling you right now, in Marilyn's story, the women that are claiming that nothing happened to them are just as bad, if not worse, bully abusers. Because I looked at it and I'm like, you got to explain this to me because that guy um, has a good side. He does. But he also has a really bad side. But when I was reading the dynamic of the ones that he stays with, the women that he stays with, they're a little bit more controlling. And they're very controlling. So you have to control that beast. And um, yes, and if you don't, he's going to he's going to overpower you and then shit's gonna happen so such as dita punching him in the face dita punched him in the face i've never punched a boyfriend in the face i've never done anything like that wow that so yeah when i was looking at it i go oh that's starting to make sense because it's not a thing where he's a different person with these people is that the women that are with him are atrocious monsters just the same they put up with it they're this and that I mean, I, I don't know. And they were involved with targeting some fans, you know, to have sex romps with. And I'm just like, is this stuff even consensual? I, I look at it as an abuse of power. And they're treating the fans like crap on top of it. And he's degrading the woman. And then she punches him. And I'm just like, what is this crap? So you wouldn't want to ask Dita how he was. Why don't we ask, D why don't we ask Marilyn how Dita was? You don't want to ask either one of them. They're all terrible. And J Johnny Depp's knocking Marilyn out with drugs. It, I guess he didn't know. He said, oh, yeah, he wouldn't stop talking. So I kind of spiked his thing or something. He says some bullshit like that. I'm like, oh, wow. So how many people do you do that to, Johnny Depp? And yeah, no, I don't trust any of them. Because then they got involved with my perpetrators. And I'm like, I don't know how long that shit's been going on. I, I can't answer this stuff because when I'm hanging out with them, I did not see these people with them. And I could swear on my life they did not like Marilyn and Marilyn didn't like him or something. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if it's Marilyn talking out loud early on or if it was uh, the assistant talking about them. I don't recall. I just remember I always thought that. So I wasn't even really bothered like being a, a meeting Marilyn or anything because I wasn't even associating like, oh, they probably are friends. I don't know. But even at the time, I might have just thought, oh, why would he be involved in that anyway? Because it's with the assistant. I don't know. I don't know. But um, as far as I know, he didn't do anything to me. If he did anything to me, it's behind the background and I have no idea. I show up on set one day and I haven't even met Johnny Depp at this point. And so she's explaining this. And then she goes, she in a half dress, she was half dressed and a female actors giggled and passed a joint around in the background. 
yeah, there was a whole bunch of people that were doing drugs on sets. I'm just saying, I mean, that was just the culture that was going on. I don't think people really get this. And it was just like, whatever. Okay. And then after a couple of takes, uh, they come over to meet me. He says, okay, Lola, uh, when Johnny is saying his monologue and when he says the certain word and he gives me a cue and he says, I want you to just burst out laughing like she just told you the funniest thing over here. And then she remembers doing the scene twice, bursting into laughter at the appropriate time with encouragement from Demi, I guess. But when they call called cut, Johnny Depp comes up to me, sticks his finger in my face, and I'm in a bikini on the ground like this. And he comes over and goes, who the fuck do you think you are? Who the fuck do you think you are? Shut the fuck up. I'm here. I'm out of here, and I'm trying to fucking say my lines, and you're fucking pulling focus, pulling fucking idiot. Oh, now, now it's not so funny. Now you can shut up, and now you can fucking shut up, and, oh, it's, okay, so stop here. Um, imagine his mom talking to him this way, okay, because this is like his mom talking to him. Okay, so this is how he talks, because I know when I talk sometimes, it's how my dad talk. Yeah, totally, and it's it's unavoidable, because when you're little, that's your, your sponge, and you're picking up the environment. So this is his mother talking to Johnny when he's a little boy. You fucking idiot. You fucking shut up. You shut up and now can you shut the fuck up? Is it, you think it's funny now? Bam, bam, bam. Okay, shut the fuck up. You're right now. How the fuck it say? That's his mom. Maybe his dad too. Um, it says, first day on set. I never met him. This is my first studio movie. I just done uh, indies until then. And I have the star who I have idolized, who I'm so excited to work with, reaming me in my face. And the only thing going through my head was, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Uh, Jimmy did an interview on uh, Guadini's behalf uh, over the next five or six more hours. And she was treated by everyone as a pariah. Yeah. Like, no one wanted to fucking talk to me because I'm the bitch who railed, who rail, he railed at. And then after she went to her trailer and sobbed and spoke to her father who said she could either choose to walk away or don't let them see you sweat. Um, resolved to stay on the film and she left her trailer and was confronted by Depp again. Looking down on her from the door frame of his trailer, Star gave her a non-apology apology. Giving excuses that he was really in his head and that the, the Boston accent he was doing really fucking with him when he said that he wanted to make sure the pair was cool. I just looked at him and I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Of course, totally cool. Because I was just like, don't let them see you sweat. And so that was that. And then we had six weeks in um, Acapulco. And then she stares that she reminded, she's reminded of the story watching the clip of Deb's ex-wife Amber testifying about his alleged domestic abuse, saying she was relaying, you know, I don't know anything about anything. And she was relaying something he said. And this is what I was like, oh, huh? And then he said to me, oh, oh, you're quiet now, huh? Oh, you don't have anything to say now. And I was like, oh, my God, that's exactly what he said to me in the moment. It was like fully brought brought me back. Yeah. So Amber would fight him back. That's why it was like, oh, we need to look at this differently because um, I might actually fight him back, you know, and and we should. We were always promoted to defend ourselves, right? Unless you were the Christian cult and, you know, they're like, just put up with it. Your men are supposed to talk to you that way. Uh, no, but I was always taught, to, you're supposed to defend yourself, right? Because they always say, go take, you know, karate. And they did. They threw me into karate. You need to go do these things. So if anybody starts doing anything, you need to defend yourself. And so I never fought women. Um, I never had, I just, it just, it doesn't feel like an equal fight because half of them are dumb as shit. And they, and they, and they just, the, it's about male supremacy. It really is. And I just never, um, I never got into these physical fights. They wanted to get in physical fights with me and I just won't do it. There's just a thing to it. And it's like, but these men will get physically violent with me. And so if it starts to come to that, I may defend myself, I, but I will, it depends on this, the person, because uh, some some individuals you don't even want to talk back to like she didn't want to talk back to him because I guess for her, you know, she's not in a position to be able to and it, you know, whatever but Some women will talk back to them and then the man starts playing that he's the abused one and they leave out the whole entire story about what they did 
And it's just women trying to defend themselves and get these men to shut the fuck up. You know? Because if he started that with me, then it would just turn into this big barking fight. But if I was on set, I probably wouldn't have said anything either because I want my job. So I know the mindset here because I was in a position where I couldn't say anything. Otherwise, I'm never going to work again. You know, um, but outside that, if he was my boyfriend, fuck yeah, we're going to sit there and bra like he's I'm not going to be talk to me like that. And so then what he would do is take it and flip it and do what he did. Because he's a typical classic sociopath. That's what I'm trying to stress here. He is your typical socio. He's like the easiest one to ever pull out. And these women get so stuck on, oh, you know, he's he's always so nice to me. And, and you know, but then I'm going to ignore that he has this behavior. It's just stupid as hell. And one day he is going to kill somebody. One day he can kill somebody if he keeps getting all violent and doing these things. Or himself. Um, the Maryland thing is just nuts. He's just like, I don't care. I knocked him out. I was like, what type of friend is that? But they're, they're such socios. They sit there and abuse each other. They probably touch each other. They do all these things and they're just like, whatever. We love each other. We're the same. Yeah, it, that's that's like the, the true dynamic of them. And they're very social as long as you're a pile of shit like that. Then they get along with you well because you're a fuck up. So if you're a fuck up, they get along very well. If you're not, they try to overpower you. And he has zero respect for women. None. Johnny? No. No, he goes and preys on some young under 18 girl. He has no respect for anybody. He does what he wants and that's it. And women put up with it and don't ask them anything because they put up with it. So why are you asking them? They're going to sit there and still defend them to the end. That's it. That's the truth of them. So let's see what she says. She, she basically says what was written down there, but Carries on the scene, cut, back to one, going again, we do it again. Ted gives me the cue, like, yeah, just like that, perfect. I hear the cue, I burst out laughing. Johnny Depp, when they say cut, walks over to me. He walks over and he goes, comes up to me, he sticks his finger in my face, and I'm in a bikini on the ground, like this. And he comes over and he goes, who the fuck do you think you are? Who the fuck? Do you think you are? Shut the fuck up. I'm out here and I'm trying to fucking say my lines and you're fucking pulling focus. You fucking idiot. Who the fuck do you think? Oh, now? Oh, now it's not so funny? Now you can shut up? Now you can fucking shut the fuck up? Oh, it's not funny now. Okay, the quiet that you are right now, that's how you fucking stay. Oof. First day. Oh my God. On the set. First I know you guys are saying, oh my God, but you seen a lot of moms do this. Like, this is what I'm trying to pull out. I go, moms are talking to their sons that way. Um, not just moms, but dads too, if they're even around ever. Um, but I've seen this where they're talking to their kids that way. And so it sucks because then when they get older, they have no respect for women. They want to overpower women because the mom's overpowering them. And then, so then he has no respect for women. He just has none. Like he's, he's, he's in fear of them. He doesn't like them. It's like a bully, right? And then he becomes the bully. And then he starts doing this crap to everybody. Like, it's just, it's a, uh, it's the, I'm noticing it in the stories and I go, yeah, yeah. Imagine the mom. That's how she's talking to the little son. Now you want, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, son. Shut the fuck, that thing. And so now he's an adult, and that's how he responds to everybody. There's a reason why people were scared of my dad. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, the, but I had to fight him, you know? So I have to talk back in that way. But that's why I'm saying, I go, it's so bizarre how they do not respond unless you talk to them in that way. And now she talked back to them in that way. Um, they can get violent with her. Uh, they will either re they'll either respect her or they'll get violent with her. You just don't know where it's gonna go. I mean, it could be one of two ways. He just has no respect for females at all, and he talk he uh uses derogatory terms to talk about women generally, and then he's violent. And then um everybody pulled on a show here um for him to help him out, and those women can go sit on my middle finger. That did that. 
Because it's harmful for us all. It's not just a thing, oh, I'm protecting my friend. It was harmful to us all and painting this picture that was not even real. And they were laughing all the way from it. And then the whole thing of them teaming up with my perpetrator people over there, they're pedophiles. I go, how come they're all into kids? Everybody in these stories here, all of them have been okay with being with kids. And it wasn't a thing that was outside government's view. Uh, it was in everybody's face. And government's just like, that's cool. These guys can go get some kids. That's way cool. Yeah, where were they against it? Show me where they were against it. Because there was at no time they were against it. So let's see what else she says. I've never met him. I've, this is my first move, like, first studio movie. I've just done indies until then. And I have the star who I have idolized. Yeah. Who I'm so excited to work with. He just reamed you. Reamed me in my face. You must have like... The only thing going through my head was, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Oh. And... Yeah, I mean, I should, it shouldn't be for her to be trying to act all strong against that. They should have taken him from the set and he should have got, I don't know, the sentence should have happened there. She should have been protected. She wasn't protected from Johnny Depp. So I think that the films, the people that are running these projections are liable for that type of action on her and us, us, because I had it happen myself um, on Rockstar and um, I won't forget it. It's so horrible. And they go, yeah, look at the people that were on Rockstar and who they're related to and everything else. They're horrible abusers. Why should I expect something different from people who are piles of shit? And they should have been liable. They should be liable for that type of abuse. It's not something that goes away. It's like, it's not a, um, um, it, it was everybody. I mean, it's everybody being okay with it. It wasn't like this little side thing that nobody saw. It was literally a shit show in front of everybody. And I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, those people are crap. And, and, you know, the I guess the best thing that came out of it is that the movie bombed so bad. It was so terrible. It was awful. And they lost so much money. And then they had slave labor on there and tried to get people to work on the set for free. All this crap. And I'm just like, yeah, the best thing is they lost so much money on it that it, they deserved it. It's like the karma of the whole thing.